<laughs> You're listening to the Winnebus.net Podcast Network. Welcome to the Dark Universe. <laughs> no, thank you. Mostly dark, because, because if you have to see shit, this yeah. in a cinema where they, they haven't replaced the bulb uh, on your projectors, and, and then if you happen to be wearing 3D glasses, which dull this down an awful lot more, you ain't seeing shit in this yeah. film. Pretty it was much. very yeah, dark. 3D's off his last time. Mean, was there anything spectacular that about was, that? Oh, no, the there Universal was no logo. no reason. Yeah, the subtitles. The subtitles. No, no reason. reason. I think there may have been some stuff that worked no. in 3D, but it was so dark you, you could not see yeah. it. There, we, we were talking about this too. There's a scene that's brightly lit with glass exploding everywhere. Lights on particles, right? 3D mm-hmm. loves particles. Yeah. Not, Nothing. Not I'm 3D. watching it going, how they didn't even make this 3D. I feel like they only like said, well, we'll just do the universal and three logo in 3D so people will pay the money and go like, oh, it's, it's a 3D. Wait, the birds and the ice as well. Are you that? But that's pretty much it. That's Are you telling me that those glasses had a purpose other than to make the stuff on the screen not blurry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it didn't work very well at that. No, it's the Mummy is suffered more than anything from yeah the problem with uh, your average theater, your standard theater is going to have a dimmer bulb than is supposed to be the industry standard. Yes. Despite the fact the industry standard is hardly ever used, and <laughs> it looks so dark during half the action scenes in this. No clue what was happening. And speaking of dim bulbs, let's talk about our creative team. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the the first film, as pointed out, in the Dark Universe, which is uh, going to be Universal's attempt to start their own Marvel-style franchise out of the old Universal monsters. Oh, their second attempt, because that last Dracula film was originally supposed to be that, the first which one. Which one? Dracula Untold. <laughs> which one? <laughs> Unbound, right? <laughs> Untold, I thought. Was it Dra- no, Dracula, Dracula Unbound is, is, is what you think. A.K.A. Called. Dracula, Please Be Quiet. Yes, oh, exactly. Man, this is uh, directed by Alex Kurtzman, who's worked on a lot of stuff uh, as writer, producer. Well, my, my, um, no, no, no. This let's is, point out, he's worked on a lot of stuff as a co-writer. Yes. Which screams punch-up. Yeah. Yes. Which does not make you qualified even after you know twelve years in the industry, doesn't make you qualified to be a director. Well, I think as this he admirably a... proves all the way through this movie. I mean, this is a guy who's re- worked repeatedly with people like Zack Snyder and Michael Bay on various movies. This some yeah, that's, uh, not that's, that's all a fucking Sterling. You know, right a, a mixed quality of those of with J.J. Abrams. But you know, I mean, like when I look at his list, the bulk of what he's done, I was not real crazy about. But this is um, also the first. Sorry, this is also the first time he's worked without his writing partner. Roberto Orsi. That's true. And yeah, they've both kind of gotten their own deals going their yeah. own way lately with uh, various and sundry. And this is really his first major film to be a director a test, on. Yeah. I mean, he's directed a smaller film called People Like Us, but this is his first big budget one. And honestly, I'll say I think it felt a little bit like just a big derivative leeching from all the other bad movies that he's worked on more than anything else, as well as like a little bit of like, well, let's steal this one thing very visibly from a very famous <laughs> yeah, beloved there, movie. There were obviously contractual let's obligations. Talk about the plot like here real quick. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I think we're good. I think we're no, no, no. I, I, I have indulged you. Let us move on. <laughs> I love that. Was just like someone's talking over me. <laughs> Against the nature of God, man. <laughs> Figured out how this works yet? <laughs> By all means, let us let us talk about. I can summarize it in two sentences. So, Anaksuna Moon is trying to bring her beloved back from the dead, and there's a cheeky American soldier and an English woman. Yes. That's pretty accurate. Yes. Uh, there, there is also a crazy mad scientist. Yes. Uh, who I actually found to be the, the most appealing part of the whole Oh, yeah. Show. yeah no, it was a lot of fun. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I disagree highly. I got, like, way too much of a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen vibe about but that, that whole but thing. But the thing is, what oh, they no. established I mean, that's what they're trying to do. Uh, yeah. It, it, that's it, essentially what they're trying the, to do. It, it's the whole that point of Hellboy. League, the whole point of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was that it was taking <laughs> the iconic horror characters and going, what, would, what if they formed a superhero team together? Wouldn't this be a terrible idea, not least because at least one of them would be pretty damn rapey? Um, well, let's throw in Huck now, as well. At this then. point, oh yeah, we don't <laughs> talk about the film because yeah. it's even fucking worse. <laughs> but this basically go, is Universal going, well, we actually have the rights to all those characters. Why don't we do our own League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? Well, this film proves why not. 
uh, in quite spectacularly badly. Uh, this whole idea that Tom Cruise goes over to the desert, is doing something around the war, and him and Jake, uh, Jake Johnson are kind of stealing stuff. Yeah, and they, then... they, get a, they, they get away with this by saying, oh, well, they're, uh, they're long-range reconnaissance. And it's like, that, I don't think you know what any of those words mean in this particular context. Well, also... Because that's not know, what these people do. They also don't seem to know how, you know, that, that a black marketeer selling uh, artifacts that they find in, in uh, Iraq are going to know what these things are. They're going to have a basic idea of archaeology. But then the archaeologists <laughs> don't know what anything is. Mm. They find the tomb... Uh, yeah, and it's yeah. kind of basically a, a light gender swap of uh, the mid '90s mummy franchise. Sure. Where, you know, here it's it's a it, well, it's it, a heavy injecting some ma- maleficent into here that you know, <laughs> she she only became evil because she wasn't going to become pharaoh and she killed every anyone and, and she knew and got entombed. I Which mean, is and a, that's a that's that's the same gender that that is a, a total gender swap of the original mummy. Uh, yeah, 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 right. is. Which it yeah. isn't even a spoiler to say any of that because this film, like a, you know, what this all felt like a done in post thing. Like audiences were like, we didn't understand totally what her backstory was. Right. So I they mean, they Alex had. Kurtzman understood the backstory. Right. So they had uh uh was it Russell Crowe who comes on a little bit later as Dr. Henry Jekyll come in and do this voiceover for, for like five minutes in the beginning to tell us the entire backstory yeah. of the female yeah. mummy. So by the time we actually get to her being around, we're like, okay, I know it's going is, on. like if you watch the original mummy, uh, the 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 flashbacks that explain like why is the mummy after the girl and all this blah, blah, blah. Is, uh, that doesn't happen until like, uh, you know, pretty much halfway through the movie. <laughs> the idea being is that basically she was bad the the Egyptians went, whoa, you're bad. And they put her, they mummified her and put her someplace where she couldn't do any bad. And her whole deal, she had made oh, a which deal. Which is Mesopotamia. Yeah. Which explains a lot of things. <laughs> she, she had uh, made a deal with the god Set, who's evil, who the deal was, okay, I'll give you this power, but you've got to find me a body that I can possess using this magical dagger. He's not just evil, he's incredibly evil. He's and, the devil. And, and, you know, the, the fact that we finally got a film where the, the whole idea is that, you know, at some point, there is a risk of Tom Cruise becoming possessed by Satan. Knew it. One day, this was bound to happen. That Tom Cruise was finally going to rip his face up and go, Evil! I'm like, God damn it. Nicole Kidman was like, I could have told yeah. you. I'm going to get angry and lectures from the Scientologists again. Every time I talk about Tom Cruise, I get angry lectures from the Scientologists. It's so can you, predictable. Can you wallpaper a wall with them now? Uh, at this not point? quite. I'd have to print a lot out. But they get very t- they're very tetchy. I was very disappointed because I generally like Tom Cruise films a lot. I think that he's a professional. I feel like I love the Mission Impossibles. I have no problems with him. As- Except for two. I, I like the Mission Impossible. <laughs> I have no problem with him as an actor, and I generally like his movies. I just felt his character was just so confusing. And, oh, yeah. I mean, okay, is he supposed to be like a thief? Is he Indiana Jones? Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Is he the comic <clears throat> relief? Yeah, they never seem to like, you know, they, they, they kind of are trying to sell him as a con man, which is one of the worst things you can cast Tom Cruise as, because he just, I mean, he just doesn't really sell it very well in this. You know, he hasn't sold it well since, you know, they, they tried to remake The Hustler with him in it. True. Uh, he, wh- he's whereas uh, they've, they've, got, they've got a perfectly good Jake Johnson there, and it's just like, well, if you want a yeah. shady con man, why didn't you go with him? Yeah, uh, Jake Johnson, who should be the one to provide more light and humor in this film, for some reason they made the decision, as near as I can tell, to CG him later through a lot of the movie yeah. instead yeah. of it actually and, being and it and for not, no reason. And not write any funny dialogue for him, even though they're copying his shtick from one of the funniest horror shticks ever done, American Werewolf in London. Oh, yeah. yeah. He ends up being the dead friend who's constantly there to help or hinder, you know, but uh, but to uh, show up at inopportune times to Tom Cruise, who's though. wandering around as the female money mummy escapes yeah. and is told Tom, hey, guess what? Now you're the guy I'm going to put set into, but you got to die for it to happen. Sorry. But, you know, it's, it's a thing. Yeah, it's that's a the whole only thing. thing they manage is that everybody wants to kill Tom Cruise, which we already knew before we went into this movie. And to make things more complicated, of course, Henry Jekyll, once reintroduced to the film, owns, like, the big monster laboratory, like, where they're... He's, he's Sean the, Connery. He's, he's Sean Connery from League of Extraordinary mm-hmm. Gentlemen. He, he he runs a whole institute for studying of monsters. But at this point, it's not like, oh, later he'll be uh, uh, Mr. Hyde. That's all tied into this as well. Um, of course, there's a little, there's a scene through his laboratory where you get little sneak peeks of all the monsters to there, come yeah. in the later films. Yeah. Look, it's the creature and of the Black Lagoon's hand. If this was written by somebody competent, that could have been really, really cool. And they, they didn't do it. And it's just like, 
I I don't mind them, you know, ripping off the the you know League of Extreme of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I know it's or, hard yeah, to say it right now. No. Uh, or, <laughs> or BPRD from from Hellboy because I mean that shit has been done for a long time. It's a pretty obvious trope, you know. That's fine, but if you're gonna do that, do it well. And it's just there's there's nothing here that makes it spectacular. It's just like. Uh, wow, this is just like the secret society I saw in Assassin's Creed, which was just as boring. More boring, I'll give you. Yeah. This is not good here, but that that was much worse. Yes. No, 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 we, no, I don't even want to... I mean, no. I did not like this movie at all, but I don't want to give it <laughs> yeah. Assassin's Creed level shade. I'm like, uh, okay, now hold on. It's not that bad. There's a level that we have to. No, that's a dark movie. I mean, oh my gosh. I, the biggest problem is here, yeah, nobody, yeah, anything, nobody's yeah. characters are very clearly defined, especially Tom Cruise. Who they start off wanting to make into like Nathan Drake from Uncharted or a light Indiana Jones, and then you just never really have anything to like at about him. He's not good at anything, anything, as near as I can tell. He's not a particularly good combat guy. He doesn't seem to be very comfortable with guns. He doesn't know anything about archaeology. What's the point of him? Well, basically, the mummy went. Ooh, he's cute. <laughs> well, guess. he was he was there, and the the choices were him or Jake Johnson. Yeah, and, and, you know, I mean, a lot of the girls I know would go, "Why well, would have gone for Jake Johnson?" A, a lot would, but she's an older woman. True. <laughs> you know how she's they like are five, about Tom Cruise. I'm a new girl old, fan. Yeah. I guess. And there's just that no chemistry at all between Tom Cruise and the, the love Andrews played by Annabelle Wallace, who honestly looks like even when she's. Not supposed to be, I can't stand this guy, when she's supposed to be actually liking him, looks like, I can't stand this guy. She has a one face, <laughs> doesn't she? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really, he, was, yeah. he was probably through the whole movie saying, so, uh, you want to help your career by maybe uh, getting jo- married? Joining Scientology? <laughs> uh, I uh, kept on but, thinking of all, everyone else, every time she came on screen, I was like, oh my god, so-and-so could have been better, so-and-so could have played this. Well, but cert- they would have said no, probably. Certainly so. anybody could have been written as a better fucking archaeologist, <laughs> because she is the worst one in the world. Yeah, she doesn't seem to know what she, nobody These seems to know. These yeah, are they, hieroglyphs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my literally- god, stop with your jargon. There is literally a point where they are dragging a 5,000 year old sarcophagus <laughs> an Egyptian sarcophagus they found in Mesopotamia which is like this redi- automatically makes this thing beyond uh, value and they just drag it through the desert and she goes hey careful with that and I'm like <laughs> well, oh you are the worst and this is <laughs> after they have transported it through the skies of yes, Iraq dangling <laughs> dangling <laughs> under a fucking UE helicopter <laughs> What the fuck? What's Her weird about all that stuff is that I, I was watching it and going, look, I don't expect precise archaeological procedural accuracy in this film, but there were so many moments when they were doing things relating to archaeology, I'm like, if you did anything even slightly akin to the real world, this would be so much better and so much more fun. Not least because the, the US military in Iraq has a large number of people whose job it is to make sure that ancient artifacts are kept safe. It's a big part of the program and it has been since day one. If they'd have written her as being part of that and kept her going, like, be careful with shit, it would have made much more fun and given a bit of tension. None of that. And you just wrote a better movie. Of, <laughs> yeah, not hard. But I mean, let's be honest. I mean, considering... You know, some of the garbage that some of the people involved in. And, and this is the thing, you, you look through the cast, uh, and, well, and, and, the, and the crew behind on the, on the screenplay and the story. I mean, three people on story and, and three on the screenplay. Oh, this was a WGA nightmare. This oh, was, I'm sure. This was <laughs> stuff managing to get, getting accredited to people. Uh, like, you know, I mean, I hate to name names, but let's be honest, John Spates' name has been on a few scripts. <laughs> um, you've had to go... What did you do on that? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> one film we know where there was exactly one line of his dialogue yeah. and he's still got a co-writer. There, was been, there were several in a row where he was like, he wrote the original script, which they scrapped all of, yeah. but he had signed a contract with them, so and they had the to thing. credit This is the whole <laughs> thing about this film. Uh, the, it has the feeling already because Universal's got so much money lined up and so much prestige and has cast this thing so I mean, far they actually out. created a logo for this as I think, a... I was wondering, a, is it cool to use that? I heard some, like, rumblings what, with... What? The, uh, the Dark, Dark universe? universe? With uh, some DC people. Is oh, cool I... I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It does, but, I mean, it's, it's up there now. They don't count. Yeah. It's a done deal. It's on the prints that are going out. You know, I mean, this is a Leviathan 
with a lot of extremely mediocre talent and a lot of money. And Universal, g- Universal wants to wants a, a, a seat at the franchise table, and yeah. they think this is it. And I'm really not sure they're wrong. And they did the same thing that DC has been doing: is hand off their big franchise things to people who just aren't capable of handling it. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is definitely a mediocre film. And technique and performance. That is the kindest thing you've said about it. I mean, and you've got real talent here behind the camera in some places. Like Russell Crowe, obviously a talented actor, albeit difficult to work with, apparently. Jake Johnson, (laughs) a really good comedic actor who is not written anything funny to say or do. He's incredibly easy to work with, which makes it really remarkable. They do so little with him. And Tom Cruise, a guy who's great at action movies and playing really charismatic characters, and they played put him a completely uncharismatic character who has no particular action skills. I don't know what they were thinking putting this whole thing together. The best guy they have on camera is Courtney B. Vance, who has given nothing to do for the three minutes he's on camera. Javier Botet. Uh, <laughs> what? He's my, a set. He's my no. favorite. I love Javier Botet. Nope. I don't, love d- him. Did set even appear on camera? He was there briefly. I, I missed it, probably because it was too was dark. He the, was he the guy that they, she tried to kill? Yes. He's not set. <laughs> this the, the credit that he has been given is not due. <laughs> some du- some dude with his yeah. shirt off is D- basically his Dude dad. who might have been vessel for set. The like, vessel like for I said, set. I'll give a certain amount of credit to Russell Crowe, who is here to chew up dialogue and have fun. Oh, he went and for it, yeah. He's definitely having fun. Yeah. And that's the one part of all this that seems interesting at all, is that, that like, oh, there's an institute for monsters. They have all this knowledge. And Dr. Jekyll slash Mr. Hyde is running the place and constantly has to inoculate himself or the whole place goes into manic, oh fuck, shutdown. <laughs> that's cool! And that's about as cool as this movie at, at, at least it's a strong choice. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll give that. And that's what this movie never seems to do. Like, there, there are points that, that it feels like oh wow, they're really trying to do a kind of throwback to that atmospheric uh, feel of, of the, the, the original 30s franchises. Absolutely. They take it back yeah. to England. They have stuff happening in castles and graveyards. And I'm like, wow, I, I really want to buy into it. And then, boom, they, they switch to something else. And it's yeah. just like, well, pick something and go with it. Uh, Sophia Butella, who plays the mummy here, who a lot of people know from The Kingsman. She played the assassin who had the, the razor legs, who was, who was a lot of fun in there. Is giving this her all, but she's just so utterly covered in CG through most of this. And most of the time, they're just saying, I know you don't have a mustache, but mustache twirl more. You know, yeah, there's a lot of, sure. no, you will be my one. I love you. Then evil's gr- smile. You know, you're just like, okay. And we rinse and repeat. Uh, th- I mean, once again, no chemistry between her and Tom Cruise. If they had had a good scene together where, or maybe the movie let you think, well, maybe she's a sympathetic villain. Maybe we should feel something for her. Then, but no, we don't really. And so there's never I, a I moment think, that we doubt that she's totally evil. Let, let's be fair. I think Tom Cruise is just finally at the point in his life where he he just can't fake it with girls anymore. Yeah. Hey, I'll, I'll, oh, okay. right. I'll say this. <laughs> He actually looks in like he might be in his forties uh, in this film. Yes, he, he looks does. amazing. <laughs> like, he definitely he's definitely looks better his, than every he's single in his one 50, of us. So. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. so would I if I was that rich. <laughs> uh, well, I, I just I do think that he's reached the point where his face, for unknown reasons, seems to just be stuck in permanent confusion, which did not <laughs> yeah. help the characterization at no, all. No, no. Yeah, he, he is getting all... that overly Botox look uh, uh, no, no, of it's a, all a like fifth generation Doberman pincher that's it's, been it's all completely... bred. Natural, that, although he is starting, like he's the weird thing was he is starting to get that thing that happens to guys as they get older who had worked out a lot a lot when they were younger and mm. may have had a little bit of chemical enhancement along the way. That you get kind of weird yeah. diagonal so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bi- <laughs> biceps. But like there's just something very. He's starting to look a little bit like Ric Flair. That's all. I'll say. <laughs> they're they're by streps. <laughs> well, let's go into the final thoughts, Frank. Why don't you lead us out on this? Well, one? on that note, I've seen Tom Cruise up close, naked. At, no, at a film. You premiere. want to tell us something? No, <laughs> at a film premiere, and it is. Yeah. It's just like it's really crow's feet city. So every time I've seen a, a Tom Cruise movie <laughs> since then, it's. Really, I'm trying like. The crow's feet. Oh, that must be like. We didn't tell you the budget. Twenty million of the hundred and twenty-five million dollars yes, budget much. here yeah, was yeah. just to get rid of just his just wrinkles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I was really hesitant going into this movie because I did not like any of the marketing for. It. I couldn't, you know, embrace any of the two or three Tom trailers they had. But I knew that it was written uh, by um, 
What's it? Kurtzman, right? Kurtzman and David Kep, and I'm and not Christopher a... McQuarrie. And, and Christian McCoy's, yeah, and, and Jenny Lumang. I well, see, I like <laughs> and, 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 and Dylan Cussman. Don't forget Dylan Cussman and yeah. John Smithy, <laughs> Alan Smithy. Alan. But uh, yeah, I see. I don't like Kersman. I love Kep, even though Kep has the most like um, crazy filmography. But you know, for every Jurassic Park, there's also a Mordecai. But I, yeah. yeah, and so I could see the patchiness of this movie because I didn't like when it was like a Tom Cruise supernatural movie, you know. But I got to say, I loved the Jekyll and Hyde in and, you know, and this, like, really cool lab. I like those moments that Bo pointed out where if you feel like you're watching a modern version of those, like, 1930s Universal movies with, like, those sensibility with, you know, with the creepiness and the creatures. Um, that alone was – because at that point, I was already, like, checking my brain out. Okay, this is not going to be anything worth, you know, its mythology. So I'm just going to embrace it. I, I had fun. I had fun because I, you know, I just really didn't give a shit about his character. I didn't care who lived or died. I just embraced it. I felt like a 12 year old. So I think for the David Kep aspects, which I probably enjoyed um, more than Kurtzman, I have to give it maybe like seven out of 10 wow. bugs that will turn me into a very, very, you know, bland Jake Johnson. <laughs> Patience? Oh, crap. Um,. I agree with you about the marketing because one of the trailers had that amazing airplane scene, and that was honestly one of my favorite parts of the movie. Oh, the Super Bowl trailer, probably. I think. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Where you know, and that's kind of that got me excited about it because I was like, "All right, it's a Tom Cruise action film. What can go wrong?" <laughs> and then Tom Cruise isn't an action hero, so it went very wrong. And I feel like um, I was super excited about the whole dark universe thing, you know, being a horror fan, and I really wanted to believe and I just feel like at this point they're relying more on star power than script and I just think that if they just stop right now you can still save this you can still save this <laughs> franchise so um, I think that I agree I think that uh, the audience will have a lot of fun um, I do think that most people will be like oh okay it was uh, uh, you know sand and stuff Cruise, and there was a mummy um so I'm gonna give it. Like, weird if there a really no moment. moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give it six zones out of ten. Well, she gives it a six because there was a mummy. There was a, mummy. <laughs> a movie called The Mummy. I give it points for having a mummy in it. <laughs> I think it was okay. Bo, no oh, god. <laughs> Um, yeah, tonally, this thing is all over the place, and it's really frustrating because I love the Universal Horror properties. I really wish they would do something cool with them. They've, they've, they've been, you know, they're, they're constantly toyed with. We're constantly getting new iterations of Wolfman, Wolfmen and Frankenstein's monsters and vampires. Um, and to see them come home to Universal and have something cool happen would be great. But they really farted this out. They 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 got a, a, a team of, of also rans to be the behind the scenes uh, team, and they uh, they 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 just they crapped this out and dropped all the balls they can, uh, which is a shame because they they had some talent there up on screen, uh, and they they never really did anything. Yeah, it, it, at one moment you're watching a Tom Cruise action flick with with a, a, a you know giant jetliner crashing into London and the next minute you're in a graveyard and, and then you're you're basically doing uh, uh, Hellboy Redux with, with Russell Crowe and any three of these things might be successful in and of themselves but when you cram them together and, and then don't offer any real motivation for your characters well you just get some shit soup uh, <laughs> so I give this a, a, a strong uh, four and a half face palms by James Whale Richard from the people that bought you Passengers, Mordecai, and World War Z, and they, which sums this up. It sums everything that's wrong with this film up. It's it's people who don't necessarily comprehend the material they've got with a, a bland script that it, it thinks it's smarter than it is, that has no sense of direction, that wastes the cast. I mean, everybody here is capable of, of better work. You know, even Tom Cruise. I mean, this is Tom Cruise at his most least caring. I'm just going to wander around and try and be charming, mm -hmm. but it, but the character's not supposed to be charming in that way. And what's really fascinating is that every so often I just go, 
God, I miss the Rick O'Connell mummy at this point. Uh-huh. Much more fun. Much more well, interesting. Who was the, the Rick O'Connell mummy? The Knights of O'Connell. Oh, is that O'Con- the name of the character? Yeah. The, much- the, the Brandon Fraser character. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, funny. It's- I was not a big fan of those movies. Me neither. But yeah. They're amazing. But they're amiably entertaining. <laughs> yeah. At least. They, they know exactly what they are, yeah. which is fun. This, this isn't fun. This is like, well, here's the chase sequence. Uh, here's the mummy with her, her mummified air crash investigators. God, yeah, she, she picked the worst army ever. Uh, you know, there are points where the CGI, it's like they forgot to finish some stuff. Uh, I mean, you mentioned the dust. There's actually one point where it's really clear they forgot to CGI a skull face mm-hmm. uh, onto one of the stuntmen. And it's just Tom Cruise hitting a guy at one point. I'm like, <laughs> this is, you know, everything about this seems like they got it, there's too many hands involved and they're starting to panic already when they're trying to bring something together that just doesn't feel like it, it wants to uh, you know I, I at the end of the day I, there's nothing that makes this worth recommending anybody spend their money on it, it, it it's just stop this train now that's all I can say about this um, uh, I give this uh, you know Three inappropriately placed fezes uh, out of ten. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm with you, Richard. I I thought this was kind of an embarrassment. The only reason I'm going to give it a three is because I did genuinely enjoy uh, Henry Jekyll and this and what they were doing with that and that mm. set up that corner of this world. I was like, wow, there's a lot of potential to do something interesting here, but everything else fell so flat for me from the CG, which was mediocre throughout, even with stuff that was simple CG. You're like, wow, you guys didn't even clean that up properly. You know, where it was like, okay, they're running on something that's a green screen and it looked like shit. You know, I, the performances being just uninspired and dull. Like I said, Annabelle Wallace, I mean, maybe she, has she been in something else that was, she was good in? Cause that she, name sounds familiar, she though. is she, a brick. She was piece in the new King Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> She's a piece of wood in this thing. She's she so was in that movie you watched today, mine. Was she? Mm-hmm. Oh, she was the love interest in the mine? flashbacks. Mm-hmm. Mine, mine, mine. mine? Yeah, that's a bad movie, by the mine? way. Mine. Um, I, yeah, I just found this boring. I just wanted it to be over. I didn't like it at all. I didn't like almost anybody in it. It's it's a shame. It really is because this be honest, is how bad it does it have to be that Len Wiseman goes peace out, bitches. Yeah, right? Seriously, Len Wiseman would have done a better job with this. Yeah. At least he knows how to film action scenes. Just saying. Anyway, yeah, I give this a three out of ten. Wildly changing power sets because I mean, right? One second they can take down the mummy with like really just harpoons, and the next <laughs> nothing works. <laughs> and you're like, wait, why would that? Well, no, they, they send the squad. The you know, send the squad to defend the, the gem. Where should they take? The dart guns and harpoon things that we were using? No, no, no. Give them us automatic weapons, which we know don't work. <laughs> well done. Well, we're off to meet our certain death. <laughs> Meanwhile, somewhere, I bet the creatures in the Black Lagoon is like, they're not going to call, are they? <laughs> Us.net has been your one-stop shop for all things geek for years. But there's a side to them many of you have never heard. The subscription side. Subscribe and listen to great podcasts like The Breakfast Pub, The Original Gentleman, and the Watch a Movie With Us series. Head on over to oneofus.net and don't forget your towel.